so as not to make the same mistakes again. So that's the third portion of the Quran has been designed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you read these stories, you read these after, you read these narrations, and then you begin to take heed from the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why find many proverbs or many statements study the past to improve the future. It's how these people talk about history. Study that past so that you may improve your future. That's why find even non Muslims talk about the moral of the story, the lesson of the story. It's something how these people conclude how important it is to study previous history and what happened or took place previously. That's why the they themselves talk about nations and movements, how they develop, coming from the period of Nahda. The Nahda is the Renaissance period, or a period whereby a person flourishes in education. So they have these various stages that they talk about, the methodology that the historians they write about any whole, any nation. This man has begin with this methodology, begin with understanding, as that. You begin to understand something, then you begin to implement what you what you understand, which takes you to the flourishing period. And the knowledge that you gain makes you flourish in society. Then you find the technical advancements that these people they make, and then they reach the peak point. Once they reach that peak point, you find it becomes their decline. People like Samuel P. Huntington in his book Class of Civilization talks about the same concept as well, about how people they come and they go. But even before you find Ibn Khaldun, the great traveller, he wrote about this, this theory, this methodology, how people, nations, they rise to education, they come, they develop things, they come to a peak and then they begin to decline. Now, as a side point, you find that Ibn Khaldun also talks about all these previous nations, they begin to decline or they begin to fall down. And the Quran highlights that the decline of the, that nation, of those people, is nothing but their destruction. Every single people has had their peak and have come down to their decline. Only one group of people, one nation, will come to that peak and decline and come back again. It will not be the Rome, the Romans, or the Persians, or any other nation that exists, the Greek people, or the United States of Russia, we've seen a collapse of that or at the moment, quote, unquote, in the great United States of America. They are at their peak at the moment, and there's only one thing after the peak, according to the old methodology, is to come to a decline. Only one nation will ever fall and come back again, and that is the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad No other nation will ever collapse and come back again. And you can read through the whole of history, the Byzantine Empire, the Roman Empire, all these great empires, you find they always came to a peak and they declined, and that's the Quran says that the decline of every single nation is their destruction. They are totally destroyed, except for the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad So we find that the greatest book of history, we don't need to delve into their findings, the greatest book of history in the world is true, none other than the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the greatest book of lessons of Ibrahim, and lessons and history for the Muslim Ummah to reflect upon this book and take a lesson and not to make the same mistakes that those previous nations that they made. The whole book it begins with al islamin ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا غَيْرَ فِيهِ This is a book that contains no discrepancy, no doubt. That's the first thing that a movement needs to develop inside their heart. Don't ever doubt the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That many promises are mentioned about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What? Like us. Huh? لَا يُخْلِفُ اللَّهُ الْمِيعَاتِ the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a truth, is a reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never goes against his promise. So when he mentioned, وَالَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَ وَلَا دِينِ كُلِّ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ He is one who sent his messenger with Buddha, with guidance. And the true and the correct being, that it may prevail over all other forms of adhyan. No one should ever doubt that. You know, there may be times that these people may have the upper hand. But the Quran says, وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ مُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ those are days that we alternate between you and them. They have victory for a short period of time. But as for the final and the real victory, وَكَلِمَةُ اللَّهِ الْعُلِيَةِ The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always remain so. 